Hello and welcome to Cole Red Plays Raid Shadow Legends. I am Cole Red. Thank you for being here. In today's video, we are going to cover update patch 7.6. There have been a lot of changes in the game. We're going to talk about some of the changes fairly briefly, and then we're going to talk about some in a little more depth. We're also going to have fun with the new insignia maker for our clans. We're going to check that out and see if it's worth any of the hype that Plarium's been pushing for it. I like that we have an insignia maker but it's not exactly a huge update. We're also gonna examine some of the quality of life changes that have dropped with this patch, just to make sure that Plarium is fulfilling its promise to the players to start seriously considering quality of life issues that are in the game. Shouldn't be too long a video, but should be interesting, so stick around. Okay, before we get started, just a quick reminder that I stream live every Tuesday and Saturday. On Tuesday, I do Takeover Tuesdays, where I take over accounts from viewers for free. You have to be a member of my Discord community to join in the, the free Takeover drawing. We usually do two or three a week. It's a lot of fun, so come and watch us Tuesdays at 2 p.m. Eastern Time. On Saturdays, I stream at 11 a.m. with my editor, Sun. We do our Noob vs. Pro series, where we show off our new accounts that we just rolled up with the Sun Wukong login champion drop. So those accounts are running about 50 days in right now. Uh, this is Sun's very first account and my 15th or so. So it's kind of a fun comparison to make and just enjoy the early stages of the game again. So if you're a newer player or if you just enjoy watching new accounts progress through the game, come join us. We have a lot of fun. That is Saturday at 11 a.m. Eastern time. Also, don't forget to like this video, go ahead and subscribe to the channel and consider joining our Discord community. Okay, so let's look. We have new update version 7.6 and we're gonna take a look at what it's got to say here in the game. So it says we're focusing on clans with the version 7.6 and we hope you're excited. I am excited. I actually really am excited about clans being more impactful in the game. So obviously this is the clan insignia time, but they're also adding special clan leagues where you can earn decorative clan stars, as well as various improvements to CVC matchmaking and clan quests. I don't know how the clan leagues are going to improve our lives. We'll have to check that out. I do think it's great. Anything that you can basically do to motivate players to get involved with their clans in a multiplayer game is a good thing. Raid is primarily a single player game. And in a lot of cases, for the vast majority of players, I think, especially those early and mid-game players, your clan is just an avenue towards getting more resources, right? The more Demon Lord difficulties that your clan completes every week, the more chests you can get from the clan boss. That turns into shards and books, so that's important. And otherwise, the better you do in CVC, the more you can collect resources there. But in a lot of cases... If you're like me, your experience has been that clans are primarily a bunch of solo players who just happen to be grouped together. Maybe they chat a little bit, they could be a little bit social, but they rarely really get involved in trying to get the clan to accomplish a common goal because there just aren't that many common goals in the game. So they've added Hydra Clash. That is one addition. Hydra Clash still needs to be tweaked and improved, but the clan insignia is a step in the right direction. The clan leagues could be a step in the right direction. And we know that the big update is going to be clan wars. And that's probably not going to happen for several months, but we should be looking for that in maybe the first quarter of 2024. So I think these are probably going to be small features in this particular update, but we can look for larger updates in the future. Now we'll check out the clan insignia in a little bit, but let's go ahead and look at the clan league here. Okay, it just looks like you get stars. You get stars on your banner. So it's basically just a visual update to kind of accomplish a, a new task. I don't see anything specific or special about leagues, but we'll have to check that out as we go. Now, there are some other small changes here with uh, CVC. You can change that. Now, if you are the clan leader and require an actual minimum participation level for your clan members, you can also now complete certain clan quests based on doing hard modes of dungeons instead of just the normal mode. So if you are in hard mode dungeons, those drops will now count towards your clan quests. That's great. And then the biggest aspect of this update is definitely the Lady Mikagi permanent fusion. So she is a mythical champion. She's just been released today and she is now available to fuse at the portal. 
So we're going to take a look at her in another video. I'm actually going to do a video just on this permanent fusion because I think it deserves its own video. But this is the biggest update of this particular patch. And I think this is going to be the talking point that we are going to probably spend a little bit of time on over the course of the next few days and weeks. One of the other big aspects of this particular patch is the champion rebalance for Corpulent Cadaver. Now, they basically changed his A1 and put a limit on the value that it can increase to. So the additional damage uh, that it does is equal to 30% of the value of the shield, but cannot exceed 200,000. So the A1 is gonna be capped out at a 200,000 point increase. So maybe you're doing 220,000 or something like that with this ability. Some people seem to be really upset about this nerf. I think it's a healthy nerf for the game because I think this was a huge outlier in terms of damage. It sounds like the Corpulent Cadaver compositions are still going to be relatively effective. 200,000 damage on a single A1 plus whatever extra damage that A1 is already naturally bringing. That's a high damage number. You add that to the fact that this team composition the, that uses Brogni and the shield increase mechanic can go many, many turns. It, like the survivability is just through the roof. This should still provide a god tier level of damage, I believe. Um, so I don't think players who have invested in this team composition are all of a sudden totally hosed. I don't think you're going to completely lose the value of this team composition. I do think it's a big hit to players, especially if you're a free to play player and you've invested heavily in building a corpulent cadaver composition um, because, you know, obviously you've sacrificed that composition like other compositions for this particular composition in a way that maybe, you know, a spender has more freedom to just build additional champions. But I do think for the health of the game overall, I think this is a good change. You shouldn't have one champion who can do 20 times or 50 times or a thousand times the damage that every other team can do in the game that's absurd and it's game breaking and it doesn't matter if it helps free to play players or not i just believe that on principle you should have nothing in the game that is that clearly broken and i think that potentially like i said this team composition is still going to be very powerful we'll see if the limit that they've put on it of 200,000 is too high, too low, or right on target. Plarium has mentioned, or at least Cirilla indicated, they, they will continue to look at this and see if the number that they've picked is a good number. So they may increase this to 250,000 or 300,000 if they feel like the nerf was too much, or they may even knock this down to say 100 or 150,000 they feel like they haven't addressed the problem fully. So we will have to see how this plays out over the coming weeks as well. It's really rare for Plarium to nerf or buff a champion multiple times in quick succession, but it could happen in this rare case. One thing I noticed here where we got to the improvement section is it says buffs and debuffs. You can now find info about all the buffs and debuffs in one handy place. I'm gonna go looking for that because I want that information. I don't know exactly where that is, but I'm going to find out where that is and I'm going to share that with you because that has always been a complaint of mine that you have to go to an, a third party website, not a third party website, but you have to go onto a, a browser. You can't find this information directly in the game and it's not even easy to find the page where these descriptions live. So hopefully this is now in game. It's now one button click and you can find all the information about buffs and debuffs in the game. I didn't expect this quality of life uh, change, but if this is real, if this is legitimately one button click here in the game, that is a huge improvement. And so thank you for that one. I did not expect that to come along. The other improvements are basically all the ones that we were previewed. So you can turn off uh, the sacrifice warning for fusion champions in the tavern. There is a purchase pop-up window that is now for spenders. If you are buying something, there'll be a payment window in your default browser, but there'll be a pop-up in-game that tells you that you've initiated that, so you don't just leave that browser standing there forever. This other small update here, the go button in the progress missions related to dungeon now leads to the last chosen, chosen dungeon difficulty, normal or hard. 
that's actually a very small but welcome quality of life change because it's really annoying when you have a mission, say an Arbiter mission that says you have to get something from, you know, Ice Golem stage 13 or higher, but you are already farming stage 17 and you click the button and it sends you to stage 13 because that's the stage mentioned in the mission. Now it'll send you to the highest one or the, at least the last one that you chose. So if you are always selecting the highest one, it'll send you to the highest one that you can get to. And again, it only saves you like three button clicks, but that feels like functionality that should be in the game. So I appreciate that. There's a long list of bug fixes. You can look and see if any of the champions that you use have had a bug fixed, um, but it looks like a substantial number of bug fixes. So that's always nice. So right now, it seems like we're starting off slowly, but in an OK fashion. I don't mind these changes. I think all of the additions, all of the improvements, all of the bug fixes seem to be at least indicating that Plarium is spending some energy and some focus on helping players quality of life. We know that we have super raids coming as a permanent addition to the game that should be available in multiple dungeons all of the time. We don't know exactly how many of those dungeons. I'm still hopeful that they'll add it to Minotaur dungeons. I would love that. I think that's really important. The Minotaur's Labyrinth is such a grind. And then we also know we have the increase of the storage slots in our roster and our vaults and our artifact storage of 200. We're getting an increase of 200 slots in all of those places. So that's going to be welcome. I don't know how long that'll take, but that should be relatively soon. I was hoping it was going to be in this patch, but it may just be in the next patch in a few weeks. OK, so here we are in the clan uh, tab. And if you go over to the settings button, you will see there is a new icon below your clan banner and you just click on this and it will take you to the editor. Now, something I found out here, which I didn't know originally, is that there are a limited number of free saves. You can actually say it says free saves available one. I've already saved this change. This was the default banner. I just wanted to change the colors and see if you could revert back to the default. You cannot, or at least you'll have to do it manually. But there are a limited number of saves here, which is a little bit problematic because probably once you get through these free saves, you're going to have to spend gems. Of course, Plarium couldn't just give us this entirely free. They need to limit it somehow. I would prefer if they had limited it like one change every 48 hours or one change per every CVC, like one free change and then one f change per every CVC or something like make it free, make it actually free. If you want to limit it, limit it in some other way. I don't like that this feels like another place they're going to try to nickel and dime us for our resources. Just give free saves to everybody forever. You don't even, it doesn't even have to say saves available. It could just say save insignia and then you could do it as many times as you wanted. People will like this feature and want to mess around with it and want to change their clan symbol every once in a while. And you're going to make them pay for it. And that just feels bad. It just feels bad. So I'm a little bit irritated already at this, but I'm going to go ahead and mess around with the editor and see if I can't find a cool new banner for my clan Cold Red Sun. Now, what I was going to do is I was going to offer so everybody in the clan can go ahead and, and make banners here in this in this maker. You can do one. You can make an insignia and then you can submit it to your clan leader somehow. I guess there's a way where you can save it and then send it to them. And so what I was going to do is just let everybody make a banner. And then I was going to have a little contest in my discord and we would just vote on like I'd pick five that I liked the top five that I liked, say. And then I was going to have everybody vote on those five and then we would use that one. Uh, so I wanted to make one here in the video and then offer that to my clan. But I'm going to have to pay gems for that, which is really frustrating. So I'm not sure what I'm going to do. For, so for right now, I'm going to try to make a good clan insignia that I enjoy. And then we'll consider later on whether or not we can go ahead and have that contest. So a little bit frustrating here, but I'm going to get started and uh, we'll see how it turns out. All right. So the name of my clan is Cold Red Sun. So I picked kind of a cold background here with these blues. You can actually do a gradient on a pattern, which is kind of cool. So you can mess around with the different gradients and then you have two colors to choose from. So I chose white and blue and it blends those together. So it feels kind of icy. And then I put a sun here. It's slightly pink. It's it's the closest pink to white. 
And I'm going to keep going and see if I can't find a little bit more to add to this overall insignia. All right, so that looks kind of cool. We got a castle here. We've got the cold red sun, the red center of the sun. It's kind of a cold yellow. We've got the icy blue background. Um, a little bit of a silhouette on the castle. I don't know. It's kind of cool. I don't want to waste too much time here, obviously. You know, but you can see the power of the insignia maker. It's actually pretty decent. You, you can move the positions around. You can also add a, a lot of symbols here. So I could even add an additional symbol if I wanted, if I felt like there was something I wanted to put inside, you know, let's say if I wanted to put yet another symbol inside of the sun itself. So it looks like if you use it as a mask, it lets the background through. So you can also do that. So you can kind of create negative spaces there. That's kind of cool. Um, and if you move that around, you can see that that's going to be true. You know, so again, you're letting the background through here. That's what being a mask means. If you don't use it as a mask, then you can go ahead and add your color. I am noticing a little bit of difference that the symbols are not all lined up exactly. Uh, and so when you have shapes of when you have similar shapes, they don't always line up exactly. So like we have this circle, the circle and the circle in the center of the sun don't line up exactly. The moon here and the set, the circle in the center of the sun also don't line up exactly. So you're going to have to play with that. It may be that at different sizes, they line up a little bit better. The symmetry is off when you change the sizes a bit. But in general, it's close. It's cool. I like it. We get some fun here. Um, and I like that this is a robust insignia maker. So yeah, in general, good job, Plarium. Not something that we were asking for necessarily, but I do think it's a cool addition to the game. I'm not going to save this insignia. I am, in fact, going to go ahead and give my clan mates an opportunity to make their own insignias and submit them. And we'll have a little contest. And that's another way we can kind of engage with each other and be a little bit more social in our discord. OK, so I hope you like this little demonstration of the clan insignia maker. I hope it's gotten you thinking about what you want to do for your clan. Definitely consider doing the same thing that I'm going to do. And if you are a clan leader, go ahead and give your clan mates an opportunity to have fun with this insignia maker. And then when you pick somebody's insignia, whether you do it through a vote or you just pick the one that's your favorite, it's going to make your clan mates feel like they're a little bit more invested in the clan. It's going to tie everybody a little bit more closely together. And I think that's the upshot of making a clan insignia is it just feels more personal and it's another reason to draw players together. All right, that is it for me for now. Thanks so much. Definitely let me know in the comments below what you think of the clan insignia. Also, let me know what you think about any of the quality of life changes that we're seeing in patch 7.6. Don't forget to click the like button, subscribe to the channel, and consider joining our Discord community. We actually do have a few spots left open in our two clans, our noob versus pro clans. Uh, it's just like three or four spots total. But if you're interested and you're looking for a clan, come join our Discord community and you can apply to one of our clans. Thanks so much for hanging out. I've been Colred. I will see you in another video soon.